Hey, welcome to Dishy Tech. My name is Colby, and on this channel, we talk about all things satellite internet and Starlink. On today's video, we're gonna be talking about Wi-Fi coverage and specifically mesh networks and how easy it is to add a mesh network to your Starlink satellite internet system. We all have areas of our homes where the Wi-Fi signal just isn't great. Maybe you notice your devices are dropping connection, the speeds are slower, whatever the case may be, a mesh network is a great solution to Wi-Fi coverage issues. A mesh network is basically adding extra routers that are broadcasting the same exact network as your main router. They work together to create a mesh network where every router is able to talk to every other router. It's an intelligent system that handles device handoffs between each mesh node, or what I like to call them access points. And mesh is really just a modern way of doing Wi-Fi, and in my opinion is the best way to go versus using older technologies like Wi-Fi extenders or Wi-Fi boosters. And if all of that sounds confusing, don't worry, I promise you it is not. It's actually really, really simple to create a mesh network as you'll find out in this video today. So if you use the Starlink router and you're not gonna be using a third party mesh system, it's actually really, really easy to create a mesh network. All you need is another Starlink router. So you may have noticed on the desk behind me, I have a selection of Starlink routers here. Every Starlink router, with the exception of the original round dish, the Gen 1 router, is mesh compatible. So that's great news. The equipment that you already have is going to be compatible. All you need to do is add a second Starlink router to your system to create a mesh network. So you can see I have the Generation 2 router. This one's from, I don't know, 2022-ish. And then we have the Gen 3 router. This is the current one at the time of this video with the standard kit. And then we have the newest lineup, this is a purpose-built mesh router for Starlink. Both of these two came with the dish, came in an equipment kit, although you could also purchase these separately to, as a mesh node. This one is different. The Router Mini, which was just released this year, doesn't come with any of the Starlink dishes. It's just a purpose-built mesh node for any Starlink system. And any of these routers are compatible with, with each other as terms of mesh. So no matter what equipment you have, you can buy any of these routers and create a mesh network. Starlink routers support both wired and wireless mesh. And in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on wireless mesh networks. You may be lucky and have ethernet runs to you know, every room in your home to where you could do a wired mesh system. Wired mesh is ideal, no doubt. It's definitely the best way to go in terms of performance. It's also the easiest to set up, but most of you are gonna go with wireless because you are not fortunate enough to have ethernet runs all throughout your house. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to add this thing right here. This is the router mini. This is 40 bucks in the Starlink shop. I did a review on it, go check that out if you wanna see all the details about the router mini. But I'm gonna show you how easy it is to add one of these to a Starlink Gen 3 standard system to increase the coverage of the Wi-Fi in your home. I have a Gen 3 standard dish mounted on my roof. The cable goes down into my basement where I'm at right now. This is my office studio location. So I have my cable routed into this area, and this is my main Starlink router. This is the Gen 3 router that was a part of my system. I've just got up my own sticker covering it up. And you may have seen this in the background of my videos before. I get a great signal down here, obviously, when I'm next to the router, but that doesn't do any good for the rest of my home. So my home is three levels. I'm down in the basement. My main floor, the signal is okay, but especially on the upper floor and some of the outside areas of my home, like specifically my covered patio, my Wi-Fi signal is not great. So the goal of this project is to improve my Wi-Fi coverage by adding that router mini as a mesh node so that I can improve the Wi-Fi coverage and performance in the rest of my house. And I wanted to start down here and show you where my main router was so that you can understand why I'm placing the mesh node where I'm going to be placing it. So let's jump upstairs and I'll show you where I'm gonna be installing it. Before we get into setting up my mesh network, I wanted to show you the actual problem. So I'm up here on the third level of my home. So this is two levels above where I was at before in my basement. This is a guest bedroom, not an area that I frequent with my devices, but it's an area of my home where I notice poor Wi-Fi signals. And you can see on the Starlink app actually, it's showing that I have a poor Wi-Fi signal. And I can double check that by actually going into the Starlink app, tapping on network, going down to devices, find your device. In this case, I'm using the iPhone here. So I click this. And it gives me some nerdy information and stats. And this is really one of the cool things about the Starlink app and just their system in general, the amount of information and diagnostics that they give you. So in this case, we're gonna be looking at 
the uh, connection data. So down here under connection, I, you can see I have signal strength, I have RX rate and TX rate. That's what I'm looking for, the transmit and receive rate. This is measuring the speed that's going from the router to this device so over Wi-Fi. So it's basically measuring the connection performance. And you notice here, I have an RX rate of about 216 megabits per second, a TX rate of around uh, 288, 203 now megabits per second. It's kind of jumping around a lot. It's all over the place. And this is an indication that I have a poor Wi-Fi signal up here as the message on the main part of the Starlink app showed. And the reason this is important is because if I'm standing next to my Starlink Gen 3 router down in the basement, I get much better RX and TX rates, closer to like 800, 900 megabits per second. This is an older iPhone, so it doesn't have the latest Wi-Fi 7 technology, but I still get a lot better speeds when I'm closer to the router. And this is one good way to walk around your home and have the Starlink app open on your device and just check and see what the RX rate and TX rate are. If this is lower than your internet speed, you know, I can get 400, 500 megabits per second out of my standard Gen 3 dish. This is gonna be a bottleneck for me. If I'm up here in this room or a guest is over and they're trying to download a large file, they're gonna be limited by the Wi-Fi connection. And that's a problem that we can solve with a mesh node. Where you decide to place your mesh node is probably going to determine the performance of your system overall. So it's a really, really key thing to get just right. In general, it's recommended that you place a mesh node about halfway in between where your main router is and where your, the area that you have a low signal is. So in my case, my main router is down in the corner of my basement and the area where I'm having trouble with my signal is up in the guest bedroom on the top floor. So I picked this location right here. We're basically in the middle of my home, kind of in the hallway area. And I've got a shelf right here. This is the main level of three levels. So right sandwiched in between that guest bedroom and the basement. And this is a great spot for the router mini. I can just set it right here on the little cabinet that I have. And I've got a power outlet behind that I can plug in the power supply to. So this should be a good location. It follows that rule about halfway in between the weak signal area and where my main router is located. Let me get this plugged in and we'll see how easy it is to pair up. All right, it's plugged in and as you can see, the router mini just blends right into just about anywhere. It's so small and compact. I'm just gonna leave it right here. It does have a status LED in the bottom left corner that I can see that it's booting up, but you'll need to give it a few minutes to boot up. What you don't wanna do is don't go into your Wi-Fi settings and connect to that brand new Starlink network that you see pop up. What you actually wanna do is go and open up the Starlink app. And by the way, I should note that this process is the same no matter what Starlink router you have and no matter what Starlink mesh router that you're adding to your system. So give it a few minutes to boot up and open up the Starlink app on your phone. You should notice right away a pop-up that says new mesh node. A new mesh node is trying to join your network. And this is where you hit pair to go ahead and pair that device or block if this is an unrecognized mesh node that's trying to join your network. I'm gonna go ahead and click pair and it's gonna take me through some instructions talking about the things that I've already talked about, placement of your mesh node and so forth. So I'm gonna go through all this and click continue. And then it's gonna go through the process of adding this back to my network. It takes a few minutes, but just let it do, let it do its thing. Uh, while it's doing that, I did wanna mention a tip for you. If you accidentally hit that block and you wanna find out how to pair that again, it's really easy, don't worry. Go back into your network, go to nodes, and then you'll, you'll see a list of blocked nodes, previously blocked nodes below this listing here. And that will allow you to pair a previously blocked node if you accidentally hit the block button. So it's been a couple of minutes and you can see that my mesh, it's called mesh number four, is connected to the main router. If I click on my mesh node in the Starlink app, I can rename it if I wish. You can also see some stats like we were looking at before with the RX and TX rate. You can see that the signal strength of negative 54 dBm, that's a good signal strength, and the RX rate to the main router is 1080 megabits per second. So that's a gig connection from this mesh node down to the main Starlink router in my basement. And what that tells me is that I've made a good choice in the location of my Starlink router. This is communicating at a very, really, really high rate to the main router. And that means that any devices that happen to connect to this router mini are gonna have a solid, good connection back to the main router. What you don't want is you don't want your mesh node to have a weak Wi-Fi signal. You don't wanna put this in the area that you're having connection problems because 
every device that connects to it is going to be limited on the Wi-Fi output that this has connected to the main router. So that's why they say put it halfway in between the area that you're having a poor signal in and your main router. And by looking at the connection stats here on our mesh node, we can confirm that this is indeed a good location based on that RX number. The higher, the better. Another thing that I wanna point your attention to, if you go into the network tab of your Starlink app, right after you pair your mesh node, you might notice that all of your devices are still connected to your main router. Give it some time, give it a couple of hours, maybe even a day for devices that are closer to this router mini or whatever mesh router that you're installing to transfer over and get their signal, their Wi-Fi network from your new mesh node. It does take some time. And keep in mind, this system is a smart system, an intelligent system, and your devices will choose to connect to whatever is gonna give them the best signal. And that is determined by the actual uh, Starlink mesh technology. So your device just sees one network. It doesn't see that there's a separate router mini and a main router down in my basement. It just sees one network. It's up to the Starlink mesh network to handle how those devices are handed off and which node they connect to. So I'm back in that guest bedroom that I was at previously where I have my poor Wi-Fi signal. And according to the Starlink app, I no longer have that message showing up, but let's check in more with the connection details. If I go into the Starlink app, go into network, you can see that on my little router mini, I do have one little light there that's indicating that I have a single device connected to my router mini so far. It's only been about 10 minutes since I installed it. So I do expect more devices to move over eventually, but my iPhone is connected to it, which means we can look at some of the stats. If I go into the device details of this iPhone, I can see, let's check my RX rate and my TX rate. So I'm now seeing about double or triple the RX rate and TX rate numbers. You can see on the TX rate there, it's around 600 megabits per second, 432 on the RX rate, and that keeps jumping back and forth. Just about double there, what we were getting previously. And what that tells me is that with these numbers, now I'm not gonna be bottlenecked by my Wi-Fi signal. I'll be able to get the full speeds that my Starlink dish can offer in terms of download and upload speeds, even over Wi-Fi, even if I'm two levels up from my main Starlink router. And that's thanks to the Starlink mesh system that we just installed. My router mini is now providing Wi-Fi for this device. And the Starlink mesh network is intelligently handing this device off creating a seamless Wi-Fi network for my entire home. And that's all there is to it. I've just installed a wireless mesh network with Starlink by just adding a $40 router mini mesh node to my system. It was super easy, just plug it in and it's a tap of one button. I also wanna mention, if you're wanting to do a wired system, pairing is even easier. You just connect an ethernet cable from one of the ports on the back of your main router to the dish or antenna port, that's the WAN port, of your mesh node. So it's a router mini or Gen 3 router, whatever you have, just plug it into the leftmost port and that'll create a wired mesh connection instantly within the Starlink app. There's no additional steps or configuration needed for that. I also wanted to mention if you're having any issues setting up a mesh router, the easiest thing to do is start by factory resetting it. So look on the back, you'll see a little hole that has a button inside that you could press down with a pin or a tack that allows you to do a factory reset, give it a few minutes to boot back up and then check again in the Starlink app to see if you see that pop up for a new mesh node pairing. And also don't forget, if you have accidentally blocked one in the past, go back in there to the node section of the network page and you'll be able to see those previously blocked nodes. Starlink recommends no more than three additional mesh nodes on your system. And it's hard for me to see why anyone would need more than that. Like I'd mentioned, you can cover up to about 3,000 square feet with a Gen 3 router or about 1,200 square feet with a router mini. That's additional Wi-Fi coverage that you have on your system. So imagine having three of those, unless you live in a mansion, you probably don't need that many. What I recommend you doing is walking around with your phone, looking at the connection stats that I showed you in this video, and just checking to see where your weak spots actually are. So you can definitely do that through the Starlink app by looking for that poor Wi-Fi message or the RX and TX rate connection details. And on a final note here, I wanted to mention a little bit about daisy chaining. So when you're talking about a wired mesh setup where you're daisy chaining through an ethernet connection from one mesh router to another, that's fine. That's totally supported in the Starlink app. It's wireless daisy chaining where you can run into some issues. And I see this question a lot where people have three or four Starlink mesh routers connected to their system. And they're wondering why their furthest mesh router doesn't connect through other mesh routers before it gets back to the main router. 
And there's a reason for that is because in Wi-Fi and wireless networking, additional hops to get back to your main router is not ideal. You run into a lot of connection issues, a lot of performance issues. So the Starlink network always prefers a single hop for your device connections. So if you have, let's say a mesh router installed on the far end of your home, a mesh node in the middle, and then a main router at the opposite end of your home, if a device is connected to that far mesh node, that mesh node is gonna to wanna to connect directly back to the main router. It's not gonna pass through the middle one. It's not gonna add an extra hop because if it does that, then it has to go from the mesh node to another mesh node, that's one hop, and then to the main router, which is two hops. Starlink wireless mesh is always gonna prefer that one hop solution. So if you see some weird things going on with your mesh nodes, that's why. I really, really, really recommend you try to centrally locate your mesh nodes if possible and avoid stretching them down the length of your home. Really, I think it would be better to focus on having less mesh nodes placed better about halfway in between the far end of your home and where your main router is located. Less is more with mesh nodes in my opinion, but you can play around with it in the Starlink app using what I've showed you in today's video. If you have any questions about Starlink mesh, anything that I talked about in today's video, or anything in Starlink in general, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.